Let's turn to that other story that's been developing in the last couple of hours because Donald Trump has been told he will face a criminal trial next month over hush money he's said to have paid to an adult film star. It means the Republican presidential candidate could either be convicted or cleared before the November election. The date uh, all ensures that uh, Mr Trump will become the first ever former American president to go on trial for criminal charges. Well, let's hear from Donald Trump. He's been speaking in the last few moments. Okay, thank you very much. It's a great honor to be with you at 40 Wall Street. And uh, we appreciate you have a lot of press outside, and I think we're going to start before a lot of them come in, which frankly always makes me happy. So, we a lot of things happened today. This is all about election interference. This is all Biden run things, meaning Biden and his thugs, because I don't know if he knows he's alive. And it's a shame. It's a shame what's happening to our country. This is election interference. They are doing things that have never been done in this country before. We've never had anything like it, certainly not at this level, but we've really had nothing like it that I've been able to find. It does happen a lot in third world countries, banana republics. If you look at uh, what we just left, you had a you have a case which they're dying to get this thing started. The judge cannot go faster. He wants to get it started so badly. And there's tremendous corruption. You have Pomerantz, Mark Pomerantz. He was Hillary Clinton's lawyer, or Democrat National Committee's lawyer. He worked in Paul Weiss. He walked in and he took over the the uh, district attorney's office. Nobody's ever seen anything like that to prosecute Trump. And then they wouldn't do what he wanted to do, and they, he goes out and he writes a book long before any decisions were made. He writes a book about it, and the book gets published, and everybody's reading his book. And the judge said, there's nothing wrong with that. And if you look at Bragg, Bragg had a fit over that. Bragg said, this trial is now dead. We can't do the trial. Well, that was one of the problems, that, and the judge should have allowed that to happen. And. You had other instances, like Colangelo. Colangelo is a radical left from the DOJ who was put into the state, working with Letitia James, and then was put into the district attorney's office to run the trial against Trump. And that was done by Biden and his thugs also, because they can't win an election because of the borders, because of energy prices, because of uh, inflation, because of Afghanistan, the worst and most embarrassing day in the history of our country. He can't win because of Russia, 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 because of all the problems, because of well, there, Ukraine Trump, being attacked uh, by Russia. His response to uh, some of the things and many other things he throws into the pot, as he always does on court appearance days. But let's bring Neda Torfik in, who is watching events there in New York. And Neda, let's get back to the facts, because two decisions today, one helpful for Donald Trump, one not so much. So let's start there. We have the start date for a criminal trial, don't we? Absolutely. And look, Matthew, Donald Trump's legal team has sought to delay as much as possible the various trials he is facing. And the district attorney here in New York accused him of doing exactly that in this case, applying just in January to subpoena some extra documents uh, from Michael Cohen, his former fixer that's really at the center of this hush money case. He was the one that he paid uh, back for paying the former porn star Stormy Daniels allegedly according uh, to prosecutors here in New York. Now, because of that, there was this long hearing back and forth about how long this trial should be delayed. But the judge was quite angry about some of the arguments that Donald Trump's team put forward about there being prosecutorial misconduct. Uh, he essentially uh, alluded to the fact that he thought that was completely unfounded. So instead, he granted the 30-day delay that the district attorney had agreed to, uh, saying because there were more documents uh, that were furnished by federal prosecutors, it wouldn't take 90 days, as Donald Trump wanted to go through all of those. So as you say there, we do now have a trial date set, April 15th, and that makes it pretty certain, unless anything else changes, that voters will know before November whether Donald Trump will be a convicted felon in this case or acquitted of the charges against him. Yes, yeah, so that trial date uh, pretty soon. Let's turn to that other 
element I was talking about, uh, the fine in that fraud case, that has been uh, reduced quite a lot today to $175 million. He has now 10 days because the deadline initially was today. It would have allowed New York's Attorney General the ability to seize his assets, things like Trump Towers, the golf courses, Mar-a-Lago. But he now has 10 days and a much reduced figure, doesn't he? Absolutely. I mean, this was really the court throwing Donald Trump a Hail Mary, a, a lifeline, right as he was due to have to pay more than half a billion dollars uh, to make sure that the attorney general wouldn't come after his assets, like you said. I mean, Letitia James was very, you know, upfront and blunt about the fact that she would aggressively move to take Donald Trump's assets, as to seize his assets. She had already registered the judgment in the suburb, the New York suburb of Westchester, so she could have easily started the process to go after his Trump National Golf Course there, a, a Seven Springs estate there. She could have also gone after some of his iconic properties here in New York or, this, or his bank accounts, his possessions. But what this court order means is she no longer can do that while his appeal plays out. Instead, Donald Trump has been allowed to pay this much reduced amount, a bond for $175 million. And by all accounts, uh, you know, we do expect that he will be able to get that bond. Uh, he had expressed his legal team some issues with securing a much a larger bond of uh, $464 million. Uh, but we do expect he'll be able to get that much smaller bond. That will pause any collection efforts, as I said, while his appeal plays out. So definitely good news for Donald Trump. He, in a statement, said that he greatly respected the appeals court for that decision. Editor for a busy day there for you in New York. Thanks very much for bringing us right up to date. Thank you. Around the world and across the UK, you're watching BBC News.